Today we're going to be looking at gaming on the M3 Max. So this is the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the brand new M3 chip. So this is Apple's first three nanometer desktop chip in a Mac. And we're going to be looking at the base model. So not the M3 Pro or the M3 Max. This is the cheapest M3 that you can buy right now. So this M3 has eight CPU cores with four performance cores and four efficiency cores. And it contains 10 GPU cores. And we're going to be pushing the absolute limits of what gaming performance is possible on this low spec machine and controversially as well this is the cheapest macbook pro that you can buy new right now and it only contains eight gigabytes of ram which is a little bit low and today we're going to be checking out whether eight gigabytes of ram is actually going to be viable or whether you should be doing something like upgrading to 16 gigabytes or more or even getting a completely different m3 chipset in order to play the games that you want on your mac so today we're going to be testing out 10 different games on the m3 some of these are native arm mac os games some run through rosetta 2 we're also going to be looking at Windows AAA gaming through DirectX 12 game porting toolkit and crossover. And we're also going to be looking at whether the M3 can handle console emulation too. That includes Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 3, etc. If you've ever dabbled with game emulation, then you'll know that the internet is a very dangerous place. Inevitably, you're going to find yourself on a website with malicious ads, phishing attempts, and hackers trying to get your personal information. This is why I recommend the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. So Surfshark is a VPN service which is a virtual private network. This helps you to encrypt your online internet connection and protects your personal data. Surfshark's clean web feature allows you to block ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts too. And Surfshark masks your IP online, essentially making your browsing completely private. Surfshark does not monitor or store what you do online. They do not keep connection or activity logs. Furthermore, Surfshark allows you to access streaming content from other countries. So for example, Netflix UK doesn't have the Matrix film. However, if I connect to Netflix France, then I can access the Matrix and thousands of other titles too. Make sure to click the link at the top of the description and use my coupon code ATDEAL and get up to six months for free. So the first game that we're going to be looking at is Lies of P. So this is quite a high profile, recently released Dark Souls like game. And it's quite unusual because it got a simultaneous release on macOS, Windows and console too. And not only that, it's also optimized for the ARM Apple Silicon chip running as a native application and has also received other Mac specific optimizations. So this game runs on Unreal Engine 4.27 and it also makes use of Metal 3, which is Apple's own proprietary graphics API. It also takes advantage of Metal Effects, which is Apple's upscaling technology, which basically renders the game resolution that's slightly lower than the screen native resolution, and then upscales this with minimal loss of quality, allowing the game to run at a higher frame rate. So here we're running the game at the medium graphics preset at 1080p using Metal FX quality mode. And the game consistently hovers at the 60 to 70 FPS mark, which is very impressive. So this game demonstrates that even on low end hardware like the base M3 chip, the game can easily reach its performance targets. It also runs really well on the base M1 and also scales up nicely on higher end hardware like the M3 Pro and M3 Max. So the next game on this list barely needs an introduction. It's No Man's Sky. So this received its own native Apple Silicon Mac optimized release earlier this year. And again, this is one of those Mac games which manages to scale really well even on low-end hardware. So I've tested this on the base M1 chip in the past and it ran fantastically. And even on the base M3 with 8GB of RAM, we are managing to pretty consistently hit 120 FPS whilst we are in space. And this is at 1080p at the high graphics preset. And I think this is partially down to the fact that the high preset automatically sets Metal FX to performance mode which is basically a half resolution upscaled up to 1080p. This performance level persists even when we're warping through space, which can be quite draining on the frame rate and also maintains a good frame rate when transitioning from space to the planetary atmosphere. On the ground, you're going to see dips in performance down to the mid 80s, but it quickly picks up back to 100, 120 FPS, depending on what you're looking at exactly. Now, a lot of people might think that the performance preset and the low resolution being upscaled might look a little bit ugly. You can try tweaking Metal FX quality to say balanced, and we're still getting a really good frame rate of 120 FPS on the ground. So overall, very well optimized game and runs great on the base M3. So the next game we're looking at is Asonzo, which is a multiplayer first person shooter similar to Battlefield, but made by an indie developer. You might recognize other World War One shooters made by the same developer, including Tannenberg and Verdun. 
So this mech quest port is quite interesting because there are not many multiplayer best person shooters out there, so this is one of the very few. It came out on the Mac platform several months after the full official Windows release and remains an Intel binary, so it's been translated via Rosetta 2. We're running this game at 1080p on the medium graphics preset. There is no Metal FX support specifically, however, we're making use of AMD's version of the upscaling called FSR 2.2, which we set to balance mode. We're hovering around the 45 to 55 FPS for most of this match. Considering the overhead of the translation, this isn't actually too bad. Also, the fact is that the game is actually consuming more RAM than the system can offer. So you can see on the metal HUD on the top right, we have 8.8 gigabytes of RAM being used, which is more than the system memory. And 4.8 gigabytes of that is actually being used by the graphics card that's video memory being consumed. So inevitably, this is going to lead to swapping, which basically means that the RAM is going to offload some of its storage onto the solid state drive which is far slower than the random access memory on the actual chip itself, resulting in what is probably a pretty steep performance bottleneck. So the 8GB of RAM performance bottleneck is already exacerbated by higher end games. So here we're running Baldur's Gate 3. We are going to be playing at 1080p on the low graphics preset. And there is no metal effects here. We're going to be using AMD FSR 1.0 performance mode. So I've chosen this setting because I want to demonstrate what the lowest performance floor is like on the simplest to render area. So this is Act 1. And this is no notorious because Act 1 is far easier to run than later Acts 2 and Acts 3. It feels very responsive at the moment. We're running about 65 to 90 FPS, which is pretty much very playable, although it looks pretty terrible on screen due to the performance mode of AMD FSR 1.0, rendering this really ugly internal resolution blown up to 1080p. However, in Act 2, it starts to get even worse with multiple characters on screen, lots of effects. We're getting about 35 FPS. And then in Act 3, which is the most performance intensive, we're getting really low frame rates and also a lot of lag and bugs as well. And basic things like clicking on a character to initiate dialogue takes quite a long time to respond. And things like NPC and companion follow behavior doesn't work correctly. It all looks very buggy. So one of the main reasons I think that this is happening is because the RAM usage is exceeding 8 gigabytes of system RAM so the whole thing kind of slows down quite substantially. And it's really the worst in Act 3 where we're nearly getting up to 10 gigabytes of memory usage, resulting in a pretty severe performance bottleneck. So unfortunately, Base M3 with 8 gigabytes of RAM is not going to run Baldur's Gate 3 all the way through. If this is a game you really want to play on a Mac, then stick to the M3 Pro. You can run the game at higher settings at 1440p, even on Act 3, all thanks to the extra GPU cores and especially the increased amount of RAM, which is there by default. So if you're using a low-end Mac, then you're going to have to pick and choose the games that you play quite wisely. And there isn't that much of a large catalogue to choose from. That's where game emulation can come in really handy. So next, we're going to be looking at some high-end systems that we can emulate. For example, RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator, has had a huge amount of development on the macOS side over the last year or two. Once you get access to, say, the PlayStation 3 game library, then it hugely expands the number of games that you can play on a Mac, especially the low-end M3. So here we're running the game at the default emulator settings at 1080p. So it's actually pretty playable. I'm using my PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, which pairs with the Mac. There is a little bit of shader compilation stutter, but nothing too much to worry about. And the base M3 itself is actually capable of running this game at 4K. So you could actually set this to run at 4K internal resolution. Even though it says it's running at 1080p on the top right hand side corner, it actually runs very close to 60 frames per second. If you were to display this on an external 4K display, then it would show the correct resolution. Whilst not every single PlayStation 3 game is going to run as well as Tekken Tag Tournament 2, many do, and the performance isn't too bad. Next, we're going to be looking at Ryujinx, the Nintendo Switch emulator. So Switch emulation on a Mac is actually very well developed at the moment. Partially, this is the fact that the Nintendo Switch is an ARM-based processor, and the Apple Silicon Mac is actually able to virtualize the Nintendo Switch operating system and hardware instead of doing traditional emulation. So therefore, the performance on Apple Silicon Mac with the right kind of software optimizations is actually surprisingly good. So here, for example, we're running Super Mario Wonder, which is basically playing at 60 frames per second, which is pretty solid, especially considering that the base M1 can't reach that frame rate. This is pretty impressive considering that this game only released a couple of weeks ago. However, a game like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is far more demanding for emulation. This is a really big open world sprawling game and it's really prone to a lot of frame drops. So we're only getting about 30 FPS. So I'm running the dynamic FPS mod 
And basically this runs okay, it's still substantially better than the base M1 chip. So the main performance issue with Nintendo Switch games on the Mac is the fact that we have shader compilation stutter. So basically when animations, attacks, etc. are done for the first time, the shaders need to compile and the game will basically stutter and wait until that process is done. So there used to be something called Reusac, which is a shader compilation sharing tool, but that's been shut down now. It means that if you're going to be playing any game on Reusac for the first time, you're going to experience substantial stutter at the beginning. But if you persevere through, you're going to get much smoother gameplay overall after a while. So lastly, we're going to be looking at Windows Gaming on the M3 Mac. And the game we're going to be looking at is Resident Evil 2 Remake, which released on Windows in 2019. So this is the Windows version of the game being played on the Apple Silicon Mac using a piece of software called Crossover, which has been modified using something called CX Patcher. And because the game is using DirectX 12 as its graphics API, we need to use something called Game Porting Toolkit, which is an Apple developer tool. If you want to find out how to do any of this, then all you need to do is to check out the link in the description for my video tutorial, which is going to show you from start to finish how to get games like this working on your Mac. So here we're running Resident Evil 2 Remake at 1080p on default settings with AMD FSR set to quality mode. And what's great is that we're hitting a frame rate of around 70 to 80 FPS even in combat scenes with environmental effects. And it's a testament to how incompatible games for the platform can actually be brute forced and run using these third party tools and still manage to produce very playable games despite all of the levels of translation that are happening on screen. So of course you can try other versions of Resident Evil which have been designed for macOS such as Resident Evil Village and the soon to be released Resident Evil 4. However the advantage of running Windows games is that you don't have to wait for macOS ports to come out, you can actually run these straight away using these tools. And therefore they're a great way to expand the number of games that can be played on chips like the base M3. But unfortunately, not every single high-end Windows game is going to function well on the M3 Mac using 8GB of RAM. So this is Cyberpunk 2077, another DirectX 12 title. Disappointingly, we're not getting very good frame rates. The benchmark shows that some areas can run at 30 to 40 FPS, but some areas will also crawl down into the tens of frames per second. Unfortunately, however low I tried to turn down the settings, I couldn't manage to get a playable game experience. The frame rate was kind of wildly everywhere. And I think that that's because the game is really coming close to the eight gigabyte system memory. So this is going to be a serious limitation of this particular system if you want to do any kind of high end gaming. And similarly, I ran the game Diablo 4 on the M3 Mac. So this is another DirectX 12 title and some errors I could see that we could get decent performance. So this is 60 FPS running on basically the lower settings at 1080p with FSR set to performance mode. So it looks kind of blurry, but sort of playable in this particular area. However, as time went on, I could see that the frame rate started to drop substantially, especially when the RAM usage exceeded eight gigabytes. So we have playable performance up to a point until it basically starts stuttering and I couldn't get playable performance again. So it feels like some kind of memory leak or something like that, but basically too much RAM is being used, unfortunately resulting in unplayable performance. So really the lesson here is that the base M3 Mac is capable of playing plenty of different games. However, if you're looking for medium to high end gaming, then you probably want to be using more than eight gigabytes of RAM. But if you're going to upgrade your RAM, you might as well go and buy the next level of chip, the M3 Pro. So if you want to see more impressive gaming performance, then make sure to check out my other video, benchmarking high end games on the M3 Pro chip since those MacBooks have 18 gigabytes of RAM as a minimum as well as GPU cores which are much more impressive the M3 Pro is much less frustrating than the base M3 chip so anyway big thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one